よ、ね、Is it true? Like he said, like the, I thought that when he proposed me, I thought that, oh, we're gonna get married in a couple months later, you know? <laughs> But he said, Oh, in America, we have to wait one year for, you know. <laughs> Is that it sounds, true? Like t- sounds like a Tom rule to me. <laughs> <laughs> like- I want to thank both of you for coming here this morning. Or afternoon, actually. It's afternoon now. And I want to thank you. I met you as you were coming through the club because you're thinking about becoming members, and we couldn't have a better set of members.、Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So let's start off this way. I usually ask everyone where they were born. You can go in any order you like. So I'll start off with Kuzwe. Yes.、Uh, <laughs> I was born and grew up in the、uh, Kansai area, it's a、uh, Hyogo prefecture. But everybody t h i n k you know, Hyogo equals Kobe. But like, I, grew up, I was born and grew up in a small, small town. How far, how far from Kobe is it?、Uh, maybe two hours by two car. Hours. Yeah, so、mm-hmm. more、uh, closer to the、uh, north. North side, okay. Yeah, north side, the Japanese sea. Right. Because、mm-hmm. Kobe, I have a good friend that lives in Kobe. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, like it nice is beautiful. city. It's so nice. Yeah. So, your little town, what was it famous for? Ah,、uh, have you ever heard of Tajima beef? Tajima beef? Yes,、yeah. I have, as a matter of fact. Tajima beef is like、uh, the roots of Kobe, Kobe beef. beef. Yes. yes, and、uh, Tajima beef is、uh, so famous in there.、Right. And、uh, my grandfather had the farm. So you moved around a lot of cattle and stuff? Yes, yes, yes. Really? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes when I was a little, like,、uh, You know, I went to the mountain and、uh, t a k e care of cow too with, a, you know, with a gra-、uh, my grandparents. Is that right? Yes, yes.、And、so your father had to work the farm too? Your father? No, my father had their own different job working in a company.、Okay. But the, my mom's、uh, parents had、right. the farm.、Right. So my mom grew up with a cow, so she cannot eat any meat. Because she f e e l bad. <laughs> she, 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 she would name them, right? Yeah, but <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Make them her pets. She, she、yeah. did, but I love Tajima beef.、Really? And、uh, he loves Tajima beef too. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not a vegetarian, that's good. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> so, you go, so, what are some of your memories as a little girl when、mm-hmm. you were growing up there? What are some of the memories, some of your fond memories? Ah, yeah, like、uh, the, you know, back then we didn't have any like a、uh, cell phone or. Video game, right? right so right. I just like with the friends jump into the river on the swim and、uh, landing on the mountain and、uh, picking the. Have you ever heard of Matsutake mushroom? Must be, of course. Yeah, Matsutake mushroom.、Um, But you knew which was which because、yes, you could get. Of、right. course, you know, I know. I know. I grew up with that. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I just grew up in the nature. Really? Were、yeah. you not afraid of bugs? No, like never, see, never, can... never. And as you know, as he knows, like I'm super handy because I grew up, you know, everything we have, to, you know, I needed to create by myself.、Right. So I'm very handy. And、uh, yeah, so, but I was a kid、uh, who was dreaming to live in the city and、uh, who was dreaming to live in the overseas, you know, overseas. You was know? it in that order? So when you said you didn't want to like go to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was, yeah, I wanted to go to Tokyo, but more than that, I wanted to live in the overseas. Where overseas? You know, I, you know, I didn't know that many countries,、right. so everything like、uh, overseas equals America、okay, <laughs> for me、right. back then.、Okay. Right. Yeah, so the, you know, and、uh, I never traveled to overseas back then, but, but in high school, we had the exchange student、mm-hmm. and、uh, I took e x a m And I got selected and I went to Australia to study a little bit. Yeah. For how long?、Uh, for six months. Six months? Yeah, but the, everything,、uh, Hyogo Prefecture, the government took care of me, so I didn't need to pay anything and I could stay in the Australian family's house. And I was in high school, but somehow I needed to go to the middle school, so I, I studied in the middle school there. But wait, did you speak any English before you went? 
Is that ah, how you want? No, not that much. Mm -hmm. But like I, I was not afraid to talk. So even make a mistake, that's fine. So I just talk, 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 and I wanted to make a friend in there. So as soon as you went there, you were just, but you're a little kincho, right? Weren't you uh, to go? Mm? You were you a little nervous at first to go? Ah, no, no, at uh, all. Oh, I was just excited to go there and uh, study in there and. Uh, okay wanted to know about the culture there mm -hmm. and uh, when I I went to Australia oh my god it was everything totally different with my country you know town. Wait, wait, what would you notice that was different first of all the um, for example house okay you know like everybody keep wearing the shoes and <laughs> you know? so, so what did you think what did you think when you saw that I thought that it's a nice you didn't think kitana? No, I didn't think like that. Like that, you know. I grew up with the, with the tatami room, and yeah. you know. But I thought, the, oh my god, like I had, you know, that house. You know, the, my host family had the house on the hill, and it had the huge windows and the cushy, you know, like the, the, until the you know too far away. And right. uh, I thought, the, oh my gosh, it's beautiful and. Uh, you know everything different and even the you know the dinner they make mm -hmm. you know of course they don't make white rice right. and all like the bread and the meat chicken you know it was a simple food but it was something different for me and you enjoyed every bit of it i enjoy so much yeah. i wanted to stay there forever <laughs> <laughs> so tom yeah. where were you born I was born in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, okay. Yep, in a suburb of Boston. Right. And um, yeah, grew up there. Very sort of traditional American upbringing. You know, sports and uh, celebrating all the holidays: Fourth of July, Christmas. Had a had a wonderful, wonderful childhood. So I was extremely lucky. I had two really devoted and loving parents that just were focused on their children. And um, but I, one of the highlights probably in my childhood was that I was I was a big baseball player. My dad loved baseball, so I, I got his influence and I played little league and I was very much into it. And coincidentally, one boy on my team, which I didn't I had played baseball with him for a few seasons, didn't really know him too too well. But by the second or third season, we became quite friendly. And it turned out that his father was the vice president of security at Fenway Park. And so what happened was my friend started to invite, we became closer um, over time, and then he started to invite me into the Fenway Park, into the Red Sox games. And we would go in and we would sit up with his dad and we would overlook the crowd and he had his walkie-talkie and his father would direct the security guards. But where his father was, his father was also part of the management of Fenway Park. And as a result, he knew all the owners. And so we would go up and we would meet the owners of the Red Sox. We would meet other uh, ex-professional MLB players that were you know, maybe retired and were still with opposing teams with the management and the owners. So I had this childhood where I met all of these professional baseball players. And then we would go after the games, we would go into the clubhouse of the Red Sox. And the very first, I'll never forget the first time I went in there, I met Jim Rice and Carl Yastrzemski and Carlton Fisk and Dwight Evans. And I'll never forget one funny story with that was that I entered these were all my heroes as a little boy, and I entered into the clubhouse the first time after the game, and I was, I was getting their autograph, and I went over to Carl Yastrzemski, who is a very, very well-known baseball player. He was an MVP, superstar, and I was in shock because when I first saw him in the clubhouse, he had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> I didn't know baseball players smoked cigarettes. And he became a real person to me at that mm -hmm. time. But I did that for, gosh, probably about f 
five or six years, uh, maybe seven years of what my age, childhood. What age were you? What age were you? At the I start? think I first started my met my friend and probably started going in regularly into Fenway um, from eight years old. I would say so from eight to like twelve, mm -hmm. twelve to thirteen. Um, my regular routine in the summertime was a Saturday or Sunday. I would go to my friend's house. We would all drive in, and we would watch the game and meet all these, you know, all these celebrities and players and owners. So, yeah. So my childhood was somewhat baseball centric, but um, it was ideal. Did you ever think ideal. that you wanted to become a ball player? I did. I did, and I, I was okay. I was really never very good, Lance, to be mm -hmm. honest. And I started, at that time, my sister was a cheerleader. She was four years older than me, and she was a cheerleader for a school, and there was a boy playing in the school who was a basketball player who was unbelievable. He was a fantastic athlete, fantastic basketball player. And I would go, and I would go to the games, and I saw this, this fellow playing basketball, and I said, oh my God, he was, he was incredible. And it really impacted me. And even though I grew up with a big baseball influence, all of a sudden, as I started to get a little bit older, I got more interested in basketball because this player was really cool. The way he walked, the way he talked, the way he played, he had some swagger. And, and for a, a little boy, I, I thought, wow, this, this guy's cool. And so I started to pick up the basketball and I would copy every move that he made and do everything that he did. And I did that for about two or three years. And then sure enough, I actually started to get pretty good at basketball. And while I was playing and getting better, so wasn't this fellow. And he ended up getting a college scholarship to Boston College. And he played four years there. And then I started, he was, he was five years older than me. So we were always, I was always trying to catch him. And I went from junior high to high school, and then he was in college, and I went to all of his games, and then after college, he went to the NBA. And he played thir 13, 14 years uh, in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And so I really look back at my life, and especially the, my early years, and it was just uh, fantastic in, in terms of sports and the influence and the people I had, that I met through the sports. So um, I was very, very lucky. That's good. Now, how did you two meet? We met in the uh, same company. We work in the mm -hmm. same company. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Japan or here, in the States? Here in Japan. Uh, have you ever heard mm -hmm. of Fidelity Investment? No, yes. Of course <laughs> I have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he worked in uh, Fidelity Boston okay. back then, but he really loved Japan, so he wanted to come to Japan in 2001, I think. And also, I worked in Canada back then, but I came back to Japan 2001, and I got a job in Fidelity. Okay, so you guys were sitting at the same table or something, desk or what? No, Come no. On, how did you meet? Tell me how you met. <laughs> uh, you know, I joined to Fidelity as an administrator, okay. and then like, uh, he joined to the company, and I needed to take uh, his picture for the ID badge. And did get you something? <laughs> no. It's opposite, actually. Like uh, I said in Japan, like uh, have you, you know, have you ever heard uh, tamago gata mm -hmm. face, right. egg shaped face? Is kind of good meaning. Yes. So I took his picture and I said, that, "Oh wow, you have an egg shaped face." <laughs> <laughs> I said in a good meaning. What would you think, Tom? What were you thinking at that time? <laughs> Um, I didn't view that as a compliment. Right, because coming from egg Boston, head, an egghead. An egghead, yes. Right, egghead. Yes, so I was, I took it more of that. <laughs> what I mean? And I thought, God, this girl is so rude. I can't, so you I can't did believe it. Did you show it in your face? Did you show it in your face? I <laughs> went very quiet from what I remember, yeah. and I just walked out, and oh, I was, I was burning up inside. The, the steam was getting ready to come out of my ears. But what um, were your jobs? What were your jobs with the company at the time? You were uh, an analyst. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 I joined to administrator, mm -hmm. and then later on, I become a compliance officer. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and yeah, at that time, I got transferred over um, into the trading. I was in the trading department at Fidelity. Okay. okay. And so that's how. So both, when you're in school, both of you are in your school, both of you graduate from college. Mm -hmm. Did, were you in fine? Did you study finance? No, actually, I went to uh, education university. So, ninety percent of students have, you know, become a teacher. You have to be kind of teachers, 
But um, you know, the, my mom always say like, "Oh, I wish you a boy," you know, because I was too um, ambitious.、Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to challenge and I wanted to see what I can do. And back then, I was young, and、uh, for me, I thought like, "Oh, if I become a teacher, maybe." Every year, maybe my salary gonna go up a little bit and a little bit, you know, and、uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. Like I thought, like I cannot challenge it that much. I, I have no idea. And the plus, you know, in high school, I went to Australia, right?、Mm-hmm. So I thought that, oh my God, I wanna work in overseas. Okay. Yes.、Yeah, so I did. You want to have a home like they had in Australia? So you're looking at the home. Did you have material、mm-hmm. desires? Things that you wanted materially. Back then, I didn't know. I didn't know like what I wanted to do, but anything, you know, anything okay, you know. I just wanted to work in overseas.、Okay. I I didn't have any, you know, dream dream back then. But I just wanted to work in overseas. Tom, when, when you were so when you were kid, when you were going through college, did you have any aspirations as to work in finance? Is that what you were planning? It, very interesting. I actually,、um, the same boy that was on my baseball team,、um, who I sort of looked up to, even though we were the same age. He, as I mentioned, his father was in this red, the world of the Red Sox, and he, even though we were the same age, he had more life experience than me. And I always thought, gosh, he was always he had he was, seemed so worldly to me. And one day during the summertime, he came over my house, and we were going to go fishing. And he came over. It was early morning, and you know he came to our breakfast table, and there was the newspaper, and the only newspaper that I had ever read before really was the sports section. And here's my friend comes over, and we're sitting around the table, and he picked up the business section, and I I thought,、well, what's he picking up the business section for? And then he flipped over, and then there was this one page, and it looked like Chinese writing to me, and it was the stock market page. How old was he at this time? We were probably ten or eleven, and and it was a very at that time.、Um, I mean, I knew nothing about stocks or the stock market or anything, and I thought and I thought to myself, I said, "Gosh," I said, "This guy knows more about everything than me," and it it was a cathartic moment, believe it or not. Even though I was a little boy, you know, ten, eleven, twelve, and I thought. No, I have to learn about this, and it just—I just got this bug, because it was I, maybe it was a competition thing,、mm-hmm. or there was something inside of me that said.、So, did you go to your dad? How'd you how'd you get started then? Well, that, just, that、yeah. was that was the issue. Was that nobody I knew knew anything about stocks or the stock market, and so I had to sort of put that on the back burner for a couple of years until in junior high school, I had a basketball coach. Who was a great guy, and after I finished playing for him, we maintained a friendship, and I realized he knew about the stock market. So I had my connection now, and I picked his brain every possible day that I could. It yeah, was just. I bet he loved it as much as you did. I think he did. Because nobody was looking talking about it. People love to tell people about what they know. Isn't that true? Especially and, when it's something like that that most people don't get into. My goodness! So you did that for years and years and years. So when you went to college, you already knew you were going to go into finance. I was very focused. I really did. I I was a, I was very rare in that I knew that I wanted to get into that in some form. And when did you get your first stock? I was fourteen. It was I was a it was the summer before my sophomore year.、Um, my mother. I said to my mother. I said, Mom. I said we have to go into Boston. And she looked at me, and she said, "My mom was a dance teacher." And she said, "Why do we have to go into Boston?" I said, "I have to open up a brokerage account." And she had no idea what a brokerage account was. <laughs> <laughs> and so we did. So we we went into Boston, and we went into a discount brokerage firm. And back then, if you wanted to buy ten shares of a stock, the commission was about seventy five dollars. Seventy-five to a hundred dollars, somewhere in that range. I mean, it was quite expensive. And I had three stocks that I bought, 
and it, it, just tiny, tiny little pieces of them, you know, 10 shares of this, five shares of this, but that was what I, what I did. And my mom had to sign as sort of the guardian of the account, basically, that she gave it the okay, but I could call and I could make the decisions. And I think she, she told me afterwards, years later, how she just, it, she got the biggest kick out of that. And then afterwards we went for lunch together. So it was, it was like a little date after the brokerage account. Your dad, he didn't, he just said, just do what you want with the boy. Yeah, my, yeah my, I think my, my dad was um, probably shaking his head and saying, what, who, where did we get this kid from? Stocks and the stock market. But he, yeah. he enjoyed my discovery of, of the stock market because he grew up in New York City and he had seen all the wealthy guys and had always sort of admired them and, and thought, gosh, wouldn't it be great to one day you know, be a Wall Street guy? Or, so he had an idealized version or image, I should say, of the industry and of that as a profession. So he didn't, certainly didn't stop me from chasing that, uh, that, that dream. That's good. Mm -hmm. So did you, did you get in, you didn't get involved in finance at all like that? Yeah, it's not like that, you know, it's shame to say, but I was not interest, interested in about finance at all. Now how did you get into what you're in now, which is real estate? Yes, that's my passion. Like, you know uh, yeah, like, uh, oh my God, like I, that's why because of the experience working in the finance, I didn't have uh, any passion. But I realized after I started to work in there, like I thought, like, oh my God, money is good, you know. You mean but to have it, to have it, or what do you mean? To to have that uh, have a job in finance. Right. Okay. Money is not bad. It's good, you know. And then so I was just kind of lazy, just keep working, and all oh, money come, you know, just keep working, and the money comes, and uh, but I I don't like this kind of the job. I'm not interested about this. But I couldn't stop working because, you know, I didn't have any other job experience. And then, plus, if you compare, okay, I work eight hours in this company and this company, the money is this much different, and uh, which you want to take, right? So, and, and especially when you didn't care about either one. Yeah. So that's why I thought, like, oh, you know, it's comfortable. So I work in finance. But... I realized like uh, that I become a 47 this year, but like uh, that after 40 years, I started to feel like, uh, that, oh my God, I, I'm getting old and uh, do I regret, you know? How many years were you in finance? I don't know how many years. Wait, see, 47, you said? 12 years or something. So you started 15, in your 15 years or something. So you started in your 30s? Yes, uh, I started to work 25. In okay. finance. Okay. Yeah. So you continue. Like okay. And then, yeah. so you liked it. How did you transfer from that into what you're doing now? Yes, because yeah. I realized I'm getting old. Plus, my mom got sick mm -hmm. last year. And then I realized, oh my gosh, like, uh, you know, life is short. So if so, I should do something I really love. And uh, we have an investment property in America. And I love you know, searching new properties and think about the, you know, house and the residence. And also I love uh, helping people. So uh, even in Tokyo, like uh, I always make a friend in the same apartment. And if they are non-Japanese, sometimes they ask me help. And then I always help them, of course, with no money. You're talking about help them find properties? Anything. They got, if they Anything? had a tax, yeah, if they had a tax issue, oh, I help tax, them. Oh, I like, for example, oh, they need a dog sitter. I help. Like, anything, oh, I anything if okay. they had a trouble, they yeah. cannot speak Japanese, and they, if they had a trouble to find something, or, I yeah, saying. you know, and they don't have a family in here, right? Mm -hmm. So I always help them as a friend. And then, like, uh, the, you know, during that time, I was helping people, you know, friends. And uh, plus, I really love the real estate, you know, the business. But how would you, wait, it's because of the investment properties you guys have? Mm -hmm. It was just one investment property that you have? We have more than one. More than okay, one. so yeah. you have, so, I mean, yeah. so you have several that you've gone in together to get. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're managing them or you're managing them? Who's managing them? Uh, we have a company that you have a company mm-hmm. yep. But you like to look at them or what? I, don't, I mean, I don't quite yeah. understand. What made you decide to do? Always, you know, love is looking for the new property to invest. Okay. But also, I always look, you know, any like a property in Japan too. You know, do you for have properties investment. here? Do you have properties here yet? Actually, we don't have it yet. But you're going to soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then one year, like we decide, like oh, we should buy the house, and then I call a couple uh, realtors, and I realize, oh my gosh, their service is awful, <laughs> and then oh my god, like the, the, I, I, I'm not mean person, but uh, naturally I thought like uh, I don't have experience, but. I think I can do much better than them, you know, uh, yeah, it is crazy. No, that's beautiful. That's but, how it starts. Yeah, yeah, but I naturally, I'm, you know, naturally felt that and I couldn't stop thinking about, oh my God, they should do this, they should do that. So People what were you thinking that. at that time, Tom, when she was thinking that way? I, I totally supported her because we, we would chat mm-hmm. after we mm-hmm. would go out with a realtor and I'd say, can you believe that, you know, the realtor didn't talk to us for five well, this minutes. this is in Japan. In Japan. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. And, you know, and I don't know if it was cultural or just lack of training, and we would just say, gosh, you know, the, the, the realtor just totally neglected us and didn't ask this us. Is, you're looking for investment properties at this time. We were looking, actually, I think oh, at that so time yeah. we were looking for even for a place to, to live. stay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But just the way they were treating you. Uh-huh. And it was, yes, we were really, like, felt neglected or, you know, they, we felt sometimes they would say something inappropriate or didn't, mm-hmm. it was just not a good interaction. Mm-hmm. And we would, and I'd say to her, and then one time Kozue said, geez, you know, I think I could do it. And I said, you definitely could do it. And, and you went. And it, <laughs> it sparked something there, I think. Yes. And uh, he knows my personality. If I think something like uh, I want to do, that's rare. And uh, if I say that, I really want to do. So wow. he understood like how much I have a passion for this job. How long have you... Wait, from, from the video I saw, it was six months then. So are you eight months now mm-hmm. into it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, it's about the now ten months. Ten months, ten okay. Because that's the time. I figured there's a little lag ten, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, about the ten, ten less than months. ten months. But uh, and you already have commercial properties you've worked mm-hmm. on. Yes. You've done a lot of individual homes you've mm-hmm. worked on. Yes. And are these all with foreigners? Ninety percent of my clients are foreigner no. because I think Japanese people know only Japanese realtors services, but. Non-Japanese people knows like a uh, agent service. Like I'm a uh, invest a uh, uh, real estate agent, mm-hmm. no employee of co- company, so right. I don't get any salary. Right. But for example, in America, there are lots of agent, right? right. And uh, they are individual owner, but they belong to some real estate company. Right. So right. they really like uh, take time for you, and they take care of you like a friend. So that's what I'm doing in here, you know, uh, if somebody come up to me, I feel like I'm a friend of them and as a friend, of course, I want to introduce great property, right. you know, and, uh, you know, not in, uh, like the, even the price, I want to negotiate for them and I just want them to be happy, you know, not thinking about the just close a deal, close a mm-hmm. deal, close a deal. More, I just want them to be happy. Mm-hmm. That's my business style. That is yeah. so good. That's so good. What's the name of the company that you're? Uh, I belong to Keller Williams. Keller Williams. Williams. It's yeah. an American company, mm-hmm. but like I jo- uh, my branch is Kelly Keller Williams Az, A Z. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Keller Williams. Australia for Australia. No, as actually, is. ours as is AZ. like the because they are head of. I know so many and t- Yeah, like Keller William came to Japan and it's kind of franchising, and one company named Az Planning Company, they do uh, how to say like a whole building investment investment properties, properties. Mm-hmm. and they decide to buy the franchise uh, from the Keller Williams, and they open. The branch and I belong to there. I yeah, but yeah. like I belong to there, but I'm an individual uh, business owner. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is so so nice. Mm-hmm. So tell me, so you're being the backbone in a way, 
supporting the whole thing. So you have your properties in the States, you have your wife here now in the investment business, I mean, the real estate business, mm -hmm. and you're doing your business with, can you say your company name? Okay, Sh sure. no problem. Sure. Mitsubishi. Yep. Mitsubishi. Yep. Morgan Stanley. Yep. And your job there is? I work in the equity sales trading division. Okay. So I have, it's, it's somewhat similar in a way to private client management. I have a group of clients that I service and I speak to them on a daily basis and we do business together where they will give us uh, trades in Japanese equities and I will help them execute those trades. Uh -huh. Now, did, were you given a set of clients when you came here or did you come over with your clients already? Um, I was given some clients mm -hmm. and I inherited some clients and I found some clients on my own. Probably maybe a third, a third, a third. I see, I see, I see. So what are your plans together, let's say for the foreseeable future as a team, as you are a team? <laughs> Yeah, oh, no. tea. oh if in case people didn't get it, your husband and wife. And you've been married for how long? Maybe the brother and the sister. How long have you been married? It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have dark hair. All right. So, busy. so you've been married for how long? Go ahead. Married, uh, you know, it will be 17 soon. So, but you've known each other for? Uh, Twin, uh, yeah, 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 but two, from 2001, One, so two. I don't know so how many I can not calculate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's a long time before you decided to get married, then you got married. Mm -hmm. Well, we were just sort of acquaintances in the very beginning, yes, yeah, after yeah. we met in the company. And, and he hated me, so, yeah, because of the egg. <laughs> you called him egg yeah. you called him egg <laughs> well, He didn't like that. And you think it all the time, so it was a big misunderstanding. <laughs> That's interesting. Mm. And then did you date for a long time before you got married? We, we dated probably for about two, maybe two, two years. years, I guess. Mm. One, one year of dating and one year of like engagement. engagement. Um, yeah. And then we got, yeah. We got is it true? Like uh, he said, like uh, the, I thought that when he proposed me, I thought that, oh, we're going to get married in a couple months later, right. you know? But uh, he said, oh, in America, we have to wait one year <laughs> for, you know? <laughs> Is that it sounds true? Like a t sounds like a Tom rule to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> might have been hedging myself at the time a little bit, so. Uh. <laughs> he's Miss Patty, he's just making yeah. sure. He's <laughs> making sure. He says, yeah, it's funny here. Yeah. <laughs> There's a question I ask everyone, usually mm -hmm. at the end of the podcast. I get around the end, because you have very good, and I have a feeling I'm going to do more of this. I'm going to have more than one podcast. I'm going to do it a couple of times. What do you consider a good life in Japan to be? Mm -hmm. You can answer that any way, any order, together. <laughs> well, I, I think for me it's, it's being able to be happy in, in a, your country of living in Japan. It, this is an adopted country for me. And it, it is being able to be comfortable here, to understand the pros of Japan, the things that you might not really like. But when you have that, focus on the good things. Focus on the things that are good, that you do enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, occasionally the things that you don't like might pop up from time to time. And you can't eliminate that completely, but you just sort of go, roll with it, take a, take a deep breath, focus on what you can do, and just do the best you can. I, one of my favorite quotes I heard in an interview was from Kobe, Kobe Bryant the basketball player before he passed away and he said something and it really resonated with me and he said life is a puzzle and he said your life is a puzzle and everyone has their own puzzle to solve and it hit me my puzzle i'm in japan my friends that i grew up with they have a different puzzle they're solving a different puzzle than i am and for me that's what my happiness really is is being in japan in a nice place, in a nice environment, and trying to solve my puzzle with my partner. There you go. Close away. Yes, I think like uh, you know, I can live anywhere, any countries. I'm the person who can survive anywhere. Uh, but this is my country, right? And I met husband in here. And the great thing is, we have lots of uh, great friend. And um, you know, I just as he said, like uh, we should enjoy the life. You know, and uh, one thing I can say, it's related to the, my job, but like uh, the, if you live in a New York City, even super duper old building, it's expensive. But uh, here, Tokyo is an expensive city, but like uh, if 
you choose the old building, you can live, you know, reasonable yeah. way too. And the plus, like if you drive one hour out of Tokyo, there is a Chiba Prefecture, for example, and you can buy really reasonable house in there and can enjoy the ocean. So I think this is a great thing about living in Tokyo and near Tokyo. So we want to enjoy like uh, the, the work hard and uh, enjoy our private time too. Ooh, I like that. You can say it any better. Because I'm, I'm looking at properties now, as a matter of fact, too. Mm -hmm. Chiba particularly. Mm -hmm. That you should ask me. I will. <laughs> I will. Yeah. I want to thank both of you for being on. Thank you so much. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Thank oh, you so thank much, you, Lance. Thank Appreciate you so it. Much. I want to thank all of you for watching this podcast. Make sure you press like and subscribe. And remember, it's all unknown, so continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed. Thank you.